Good afternoon and welcome to Yarn Lane. I know, I know, I know, but we are a separate channel at the moment. We're under the same umbrella. We are under the same umbrella, but this is all about knitting and crochet. So what I'd like to do is, uh, we've only got the, the one hour today with, uh, obviously every day with uh, Catherine, but I'd like to show you around how you can get in touch and how you can buy. So for, for getting in touch with us, there are three different ways you can do it. You can send an email to studio at yarnlane.com, studio at yarnlane.com. You can send an, I uh, know, on Facebook Live, you can go to the Facebook Live, which I'm watching now. I'm there now. You can send a Facebook line. That's, uh, have we not got a slide for Facebook? Oh, yeah, there you go, there you go, there you go. Facebook Live is Yarn Lane TV. Obviously, you can follow us on Instagram and uh, Instagram as well, but obviously, we're not, we're not going out there. Or you can go to our website, www.yarnlane. Has, has it got TV on it or just Yarn, yarn Lane? Yarnlane.com. And then here it is. That's what it looks like. You click on Watch the Show Live. And there will be in the little square up there. Well, we're not there at the moment. But if you look underneath, oh no, first of all, there's a message to the right-hand side, just the same as this one's on um, Sewing Street, where you can send a message in to us. That's the what comes up in the white box underneath. And now, while we're there, while we're here, I don't know what she's writing. I can't see the screen from here. Jab still on Wednesday, yeah? Nine o'clock, nine o'clock. Uh, anyway, look, scroll down the page, you'll see pre-order. This is everything we have in Yarn Lane show today, on the loan, on the show today. Now, that's all down as pre... I thought we had more than that. That's really funny, isn't it? It looks like we've got loads. Anyway, that's all on pre-order at the moment. When we play it, when we start playing something, the screen, the, 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 the list will come into two columns. There'll be pre-order on that side and things we've already shown during the show on that side. So between the two of them, you'll either found whatever's been on the air or what is coming on air in the next hour. Catherine's here with me today as our knitting expert because it's all knitting today. It's all knitting. So do you need to say anything else before I start? No. Oh, you can ring the call centre. Oh, it's a different number. It's a different number. If you've been watching Sewing Street, it's a different number. Look, 0800 4700 600 is the number. And also, if you have bought something from Sewing Street during the day today, whether it be from the television show or whether it be uh, uh, from the shop, um, that should be in pay for the day because at the moment Yarn Lane and Sewing Street come from the same warehouse. We only charge you one p and for the whole day from midnight last night to midnight tonight. Um, so if you bought from Sewing Street, then you won't be charged any um, post and packaging for anything you buy from this show today. Right, shall we get on with it? Hello, Catherine. Hello. Hello. <laughs> we have to start all over again, you see. We're, we've been together for hours now. For five hours we've been together now. Right, okay, so we've got what we're doing today is children's knitwear, and it's some of the gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. I've got two here. I'm going to start with the pink and grey one. Okay, now the, both of these patterns are patterns that fit both children and adults. I didn't know why I swapped, swapped over because it's exactly the same jump here. Right, I've got the pink and grey one to start with. So now, obviously, even though the pattern is for grown-ups and children, the ball, the, what we're supplying in this kit is for children's size. So you can't make an adult one with what we've got in the kit here because you're getting your four balls. Oh, hang on. Let me show you the jumper, first of all. Let me show you gorgeous raglan sleeve. Beautiful stripes, wider stripes on the body, narrower stripes on there, little uh, turtleneck, and the lovely little, um, what's that called? Rib, rib at the bottom there. What's the matter, Hannah? Oh, yes, and this one was made by, I would have forgotten. These are all made by friends of Rebecca Eads, you see. Uh, Maggie Priestley has made, that's beautiful, isn't it? Maggie, that's gorgeous. So there's the pattern. Okay, so the size of the pattern starts here at 22 chest and goes all the way up to a 44 inch chest. Obviously, what size would this, can we go up with this then? Um, there, 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 goes up to that size. It can go up to a 30 inch chest. No, yeah, yeah, two balls, two balls, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can do with this bundle, you can do size 22, 24, 26, 28 or 30. As soon as you go over 30, there's not enough yarn in this uh, bundle. The yarn itself is uh, 100 grams, 100% 100 acrylic, and uh, it's rather gorgeous. It's Mariner double knit, Mariner double knit. And of course, see the Mariner pattern there. You obviously don't get this jumper in the final price, but that's what you get. There you go, and how much is that? 10.99, 10 pounds and 99 pence for the pink and gray. It's rather beautiful, that colorway is stunning, isn't it? 
Okay, then we move from there to the classic blue and white. Let me just show you. Again, this will be exactly the same colorway. You can make it for an adult, but you've got enough balls to make up to the 30 inch chest, the 30 inch chest. So you get two blue, very rich royal uh, navy blue, and two pure whites. And then this table, now this table looks like it's smaller than that first one. Yeah, because everyone, oh yeah, now this made by Karen Hatton. Karen made some of the things we did the other day, didn't she? The, the, the show we did the other day. So the, all, the, all the samples you're gonna see are all gonna be different sizes. We haven't done the adult one, obviously it's a smaller one. That's so cute, isn't it? Looks very different in the in the blue and white. It doesn't look grey and pink, doesn't it? Okay, so Hannah, when she has children, she's going to make them all wear matching clothes to her. They're all going to wear the same clothes. <laughs> Poor children. Right. So, Catherine, what are we going to talk about for the towards these two patterns then? Well, with this one, this one's a really lovely, just basic jumper. Uh -huh. um, so if you've just got into knitting, this is a really good one to start if you've not um, knitted a garment before. Um, it's also really great because you can do the whole family. Yes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you really can. Um, from, so 22 inches is about a year, one year old, up to a chap or lady. Well, that's my size, 44. Inches. 44 is the size jumper I would buy. So Hannah and I can have matching jumpers. Yeah. There you are. We, we yeah. might commission you to do that then. So I was going to just have a chat with you about just starting to read your patterns if yeah. you're new to it mm -hmm. and how to get how to get going um, really with a, a nice um, a nice basic knit because sometimes people can be a bit daunted to think that you know oh a whole garment but actually this this would be a great one to start with because it's got lo lots of basics in it's not too difficult um, so obviously you choose your sizing decide how big you are. Uh -huh. um, it gives you, a bit like in dressmaking patterns, some sizing things, so length to the back of the neck, as well as your chest size, you've got your length to the back of the neck, you've got your sleeve seam. So if you're somebody, you know you've got slightly short sleeves or sh arms. Like short arms, arms. Or, or long arms, you can adjust it accordingly. And also it's good because it act so even though you're making it for a size, say, 28 inch chest for a boy, you know that it's going to finish at 31. So if, yes. if you've got a jumper that fits him already or her already, you could measure it to make sure that's going to be enough ease for the child to wear. Absolutely. So you want to sort of check that information first. Obviously, then it tells you your quantity of, of yarn and the sizes of knitting needles that you're going to use. And it will tell you here on this one that you've got to use three and a quarter needles and four mil needles. And you can, oh, okay. You might think, oh, why do I need two different Yeah, pairs? why do you need two different sizes? Because you do your rib on a smaller needle than you do your Oh, so that's why you've needing. got a smaller needle than I've got for yes, this. Yes, yeah. because you want your rib to be a little bit stretchy. Yeah. And, but also, like a cuff, you want your cuff to cling to you, or you want your neckline to lie nice and flat, don't you? So you yeah. do it on the slightly smaller needles so that it uh, it does that. Four mils gone through, they're the blue ones. If you buy these, they're the blue coloured ones, a four millimetre. And three and three quarters are the purple ones that you've got, aren't they? Yes. Yeah, that's yes. right. There you go, 3 99 All of these are on the website underneath us, but also if you go to the Yarn Lane shop, you'll find variety of makes and things like that as well. Um, okay. And before you start um, knitting a garment, you should really check your tension to make sure that what you're knitting is going to come out the right size. And how do you do that? Though? So there's always a little bit that tells you about this, that tells you, so on this one, 22 stitches and 28 rows to 10 centimetres of stocking stitch on right. your four mil needles. So you, you um, need to knit a little bit first. You need to cast on 22 stitches, knit 28 rows and then measure it. So do you do it out of the wool or the yarn that we've got? The yes. Because other, I presume different yarns. Yes. Do so you want things. to do it with the same the yeah. same yarn um, in on the right size needles, as they say, and then you can measure it. And if you're significantly bigger or smaller than that tension guide, you need to use a different size needle. Oh, okay. Otherwise, your garment will come up too big or too, or small. too small. So that is quite important, if especially if you're if you don't know. If you are a particularly tight knitter or a particularly loose knitter and you're again still just starting out with these things it's a good idea yeah. to check because you'll just get it you'll get a better result in the end uh, carol metcalf says my nan did that one year 
did that one year. Christmas presents. She made Christmas presents for everybody. Mum, dad and three children. But the head holes were too small on all of them. Oh. Oh, that must be so upsetting. <laughs> what a shame. Um, and then the other thing you always get on a pattern is all your little abbreviations at the start so that you know what you're doing. Yeah. Um, so when you start, when you actually look at the, the pattern, you don't think, oh my goodness, what's K1, P1, rep from start to end? <laughs> no, exactly. Yeah. K is knit, P is pearl, um, rep, repeat. Um, so it's all there to check. Um, so it, it's not, it is a slightly new language to learn, yep. but it doesn't need to be because you've got a little dictionary to help you at the start. <laughs> and a tip that I would suggest if you're going to have a go at one of these, especially one with lots and lots of sizes on, and you can see I've done it on this, go through your pattern and highlight the size that you are going to make because it will tell you here you're casting on and it tells you the different number of stitches for each size. Well, there's a lot of different sizes in this pattern and if you're doing one in the middle, oh, you yes. could really easily lose your place. Oh, yes, yeah, so you off don't with do one, one bit and then jump to the next size by accident yes. and it's all going to go Exactly, so out. say you're doing the fourth one in. If you go through at the start, and highlight or circle the fourth one in on every one, it's going to come out correctly because you're doing the right bit. Perfect. So that would be my top tip for tackling this, especially if you're new to this. Perfect. Okay. Right, you home. Okay, so then that was that one. So let's now move on to, you ready to move on to the next one? Yes. Now, how, I'm going to hold this up, right? Look at this, right? How cute is this? But, 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 look. Mama, baby. So, I'll tell you who knitted. Shall I, which one should I do first? Mama first. So let me move Bebe out the way. Right. So this one, this pattern, again, goes from a 22-inch chest to a 42-inch 22 22 chest. This is obviously the, the grown-up version, and this was made by Margaret Chapman. Margaret Chapman made this one. So that's the adult version. And enough yarn in this bundle. Now, if you're going to go for the children, don't buy this one. Do not buy this one if you're going to do a child size one. But this one has one, two, three, four, five, six balls of double knit, 100 grams each, 100% acrylic. And with six balls, you can do... How many balls are in the little one? Three. So if you're going to do a size 28 chest up to 42, you need to buy this bundle. Yeah, it's the adult bundle, but it's also the large, the size of children because there's only three balls in the small bundle and that will only do up to the 20, uh, 26 inch chest. So, so 28 inch chest up to 42 inch chest, you need to buy this bundle. And you'll have some left over if you are doing the 28 inch because you need four balls for that one. So it's 28 and 30 chest is four balls. 32, 34, 36 is five balls. And then 38, 40 and 42 is your six balls. And you get all six in this bundle. So if you buy this item code number here, K, oh sorry, I'm looking there, K06675, you get this bundle because we're also going to do a child's bundle in a second. And this makes anything up from the 28 chest upwards. So it's still child children's, but the larger size child upwards. And then this one here has got three balls in it. Well, actually, I'll just do it like this. Let's move those over there. One, two, three. There you go. This one has got three balls in it to make the little one, which was made by, like a raffle this, Carol Walter. Carol Walter made this cute, isn't it? Right, the buttons, we don't, we're not doing the buttons. So this one, with the three balls, you can do 24, 22, 24, and 26. 22, 24, and 26. Anything above that, you need more yarn. Okay, so what, oh, hang on, now I've also got a different version of this one as well. I've also got the lovely peachy colour. So again, this is, you can only do, with this bundle, you can only do 22, 24, 26 inch chest. Above that, you need more, more yarn, and we've only got three in this one. So this is only available for the 22, 24, or 26-inch chest, right? And then that's the lovely... Oh, hang on, and who made this one? 
Teresa Constantine made this one. Teresa Constantine. It's cute, isn't it? Again, the buttons aren't included. So what are we going to talk about on this pattern then? Okay, I was going to show you how to do the nice little lacy pattern up the front okay. that goes up the front of the thing. That's on all, all the designs, that's on, on all of them. Yes. So I have cast on for um, a front of the cardigan. And, oh, it's interesting, this pattern. It doesn't have a rib at the bottom. Okay. You have a little look. Yeah, I'll put um, this one out. There but you go. I, quite, I quite like this. Um, you actually knit um, five, oh, so row, Sorry, five rows of stocking stitch, and then you do a plain knit row, but on the long side, on the wrong side, so you get this sort of little bobbly row. But yeah. then when you come, I'll show you on this one because I've gone a bit further yeah. with it. When you come to put it all together, that just gets folded up and stitched in place. So it gives you a really, really lovely, neat edge. Right. Instead of a rib. So it's an alternative to, to a rib button. Perfect. So I've done that part. And um, I picked this bit out because you, you use stitch markers with this. Um, stitch markers are available on the website. We haven't which got are like them here today. Funny little paper clippy type things. If you haven't got them, you can always use a a little piece of embroidery thread or alternate coloured yarn just right. to mark where it is. Because I've, I've only heard of those in, so far, because I only know nothing about it, uh, in crochet, all the crochet, like when you've done crochet or other people have done crochet, they've used them a lot in that. But I haven't seen them in a knitting show before. So what? why do you need them for this? So one? this is going to help us place our lacy row all in the same place. Perfect. I'm going to use one that actually contrasts. I was going to say, don't use the same colour. No, I've realised that's the same colour and you're not going to be able to see it. Um, so it tells you to count in from the end of the last row and place the marker after the 21st stitch. So let's count in two. Is it four, a different six. number for all the different sizes? Ten. Sorry, you're trying to count. 18, 20. It is, yes. Okay. So that's why, again, you need to keep an eye on if you're doing the fourth size in, mark all of them. So you'll know then that you've got to cut count in 21. Yes, yes. Uh, so, yes, it's a different number depending which. Yeah. open there we go so we're just going to put it through the stitch there and that marks marks the spot okay yeah you do it in crochet a lot to mark the end of your rounds yes, and things yeah, yeah. Uh, and then you can start to work in your pattern you've got a four row pattern uh, which is not particularly difficult a nice little lacy pattern so we're on the right side of the work we're going to knit to within three stitches of the marker See, so this is why we know. So it's not because each sizing has got different number of stitches. Yes. Rather than saying knit so many stitches in, you've got your marker in place. You're just knitting to within three stitches of so it. So on all the sizes, it's always three stitches before yes. the marker. Okay. Yes. So let's knit along. Have you got a knitting machine or do you always do your knitting by hand? Oh yeah, it's always by hand. I haven't got a knitting machine. They're quite big, I think, aren't they? They were quite a thing to have years ago. I'm not sure how well, popular no, no, they are an now. There's an there? upside. I'm only asking because we know that people have been approaching us to say, oh, are you going to do knitting machines? Oh, okay. So I said, oh, I'll ask around and see who uses them and how popular they are. I never have. When I was knitting as a, as a youngster, which is, don't knit that much these days, actually, just because of time, really. Yeah. But as a youngster, I don't think I could have afforded a knitting machine. No, no. And also, <laughs> back in the 70s, they used to show an advert on the telly and everyone would be sitting around watching the, te the telly and the mum would be in the background <laughs> yes, doing this. But the noise, went, <laughs> I'm sure it's changed since then. But it was like, how can they be sitting watching the telly if she's in the back corner going like that? I remember that. Yeah. yeah. No, yeah. you don't. I do, vaguely. I do. Yeah. I mean, I, I suspect they probably have updated, like sewing yes, machines yeah. have, haven't they? Yeah. Okay, so I'm within, to, within my three stitches. Right. Then we are going to slip one. What does that mean? So slip one means to literally take the stitch. We're not doing any knitting or purling with it. Just put it onto oh, the other needle. Oh, so you're just transferring needle. it from one just needle to the other. transferring it yeah. over. Okay. Then we're going to knit one. And then... We're going to, it's called PSSO, pass the slip stitched over. So pick up, grab that um, stitch with your needle and pass it over the top like that. 
So was was that the last stitch or was that the one that you so slipped That was over? the one I slipped. Okay, so the one that you didn't stitch, you've gone back and you've taken it back. Yes. Right. I'm sorry to put it in such simple no, that's terms, fine. but I don't know what to do. That's fine. Then we're going to put my yarn forward. Yeah. And I'm going to knit two. So we've still got the right number of stitches. Yeah. We've we've taken one and we've looped it off, but then we've made another yeah. one. Okay. Then we're going to put our yarn forward again. Mm -hmm. We're going to knit two together. So you take both stitches as you knit. And then we're going to knit to the end. Okay. And that's just that. That's the only little bit of pattern. But obviously, every um, time you do it, it's important you do it in the right place. Yeah. So, our, so does that just create the little hole? So there? as I go back across the next row, you'll see how the how right. the little the little holes appear. Yes. Oh yeah, look, uh, Sarah says knitting machines are getting very popular again. I love mine. So Sarah, do you not have to? You're not sitting in the back of the room going. Yun, 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 yun. Is it not like that anymore? They also look quite big, don't they? Yes. So our second row is just to purl across. Okay, the ladies' swing jacket bundle with the six balls are very, very popular. So just keep your eye on that if you've got that in your basket. It's a really nice colour, that raspberry colour. Raspberry, that, that's exactly what colour it is, raspberry. Ooh. Sim oh, similar colour to that, my big raspberry fur coat. Have you seen that? Me wear that. What? I've got a fur coat that colour. Not, real, not, not real, real fur, fur. fake fur, no. but fur. that colour. Everyone can see me coming. The yeah. first time I wore it in the school playground, the headmistress, she just kind of looked me up and down in a very disapproving way. You weren't a student at the time. You were no, a mum. No. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, no, Hannah thought you meant when you were in school. Oh, no, now. <laughs> You've grown into it. It was miles too big when you were in school. Right, nearly across. It must be. I've never been part, obviously, obviously part of that community but the school gate <laughs> mum community you must be able to write plays about it because <laughs> of the cliques and the what goes on and yeah. who talks to who and everything like that what car they turn up in i know where where in birkenhead where julie's kids went to school it was very much who had the biggest range rover and who had the most modern range rover and things like that so hopefully you can see as i've knitted back across oh yes. two little holes are formed and that was from where we did the yeah. Yarn forward, yeah. How brilliant. Isn't it so clever? now does that happen? Do you now do a normal row? I've now got a normal row of knit and another row, normal row of pearls. So those four rows make the pattern and then I do my... So, um, so that, that's how you make the, the almost the top of the hole then. So you've yes. missed the stitch, or not missed the stitch, you've done created the stitch, but then you've done two lines of normal stitching and then start the next one again. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. So those four rows form the pattern. You keep doing that pattern, it says for a further eight rows. Yep. If it was the back, it would be for more or until it's a, cer a certain size. Okay. Fantastic. Is there anything else on that one you'd like to show us? No? <laughs> <laughs> you have to keep filling my hand up. I wasn't planning to, but <laughs> no, no, that's I'm fine. just looking to see if there's anything that'd be important to to um to tell you no, about no, no, that, anything that's else. Absolutely fine. I think that was the most um none of these are particularly difficult knits today. Okay, what They're are these all, um, what are these for then? I've those got those aren't stitch holders. And what do you use those for? So then? often when you get up to the neckline, especially on um like a round neck jumper, yeah. you will knit across a little bit. You will put some of the stitches on the holder and then knit across a bit more. Okay. So then you can knit up the sides up to the shoulder, leaving oh, I see, your, I see, I see. I your just, neck hole. Because they just look like um, kilt pins and I wasn't quite sure what they were <laughs> no, for. No, they're for popping your stitches on so uh, that you don't you don't lose them. And then, then when you come to pick up your stitches for the rib round the neckline, You'll be able to knit them off those. So you then take holders. them off and knit them off that. So you use that as a, right. the other needle until you get to the end of the ones that are yes. there and then carry on yeah. with the other. Yeah, so they're needle. you know, useful bit of kit to have yeah. in your in your knitting Perfect. box bag. Most popular so far, ladies swing back cardigan with six balls of wool. But I think that might be also because not just for ladies, it's because it's from 
the third size upwards sort of thing. So everyone's just making sure they've got enough yarn for that one. A few of the 20 of those left now. Oh, the stripy blue and white jumper. Second favourite. Now, I thought, isn't it weird? I thought the pink and grey one would have been the second favourite. Do you think it's because we were saying earlier about it? It's not that we're gender what's it here, but the blue, it's very, you know, the, that one's very girly, but that one could be a girl or a boy. Yeah, and you don't often get really nice knits for little boys. Is don't that, you? No, well, I often think there's a lot nicer stuff for girls out there, and that's a really lovely knit for, yeah, for yeah. a little lad, actually. Aww. Right, okay, so now I'm going to move on to this one here now this is a baby one this is tiny this is it in blue and this was knitted by maggie priestley maggie priestley knitted this one for us now look at this so this yarn is beautiful it's smooth touch it's from mariner this is the one uh this is the one that's made to feel like cotton isn't it this one yeah so it's a polyester yarn but they've made it feel like cotton and it's variegated and you get one white so you get three blue one variegated now let's have a look at the sizing okay the picture on the web of very confusing is of the green one but the ones on the pattern is the yellow and then there's also a different version of that which, which i'll talk to you about in a second so i've got the different sizes here so this one goes from a 16 inch chest up to a 22 inch chest and you, re you need three balls of blue and one of white. Oh, there you go. So every single size, you can make every single size in this, in this pattern, 16 to 22, with this bundle. With this bundle. So this is, I've got it in green as well coming up in a minute. But this is my blue variegated. They're beautiful. It's gorgeous, isn't it? So now there is an alternative on the back. Oh, right. Okay. So here... If you look here, the stripes on here, which are the ones we've made, but if you look on the back there, the yoke section, now is that the same technique that you've just done? It's like a little lacy, little lacy pattern at the top. Is that the same as the one you've just done? It's slightly different. Oh, is so it? So I am going to show oh, you, I am going to show sorry, you sorry, it sorry, because sorry, it is fine. slightly different okay. actually. Right, so this is the blue, this is the blue and white version here. And that's that one. Then I've also got it in green and white which is here. Same pattern. This is obviously a bigger size, this one. This one's one of the bigger sizes. Exactly the same as the blue one, but a bigger size. Oh, this one was made by Karen Hatton. Blimey, Karen, you've been busy. So that's this one, as you can see here. Again, what you get in this one is you get one white and you get three of the green. Would you call that chartreuse? And uh, this is, again is the yarn, 100% polyester, or acrylic, acrylic, acrylic but it's been made to feel like a cotton yarn. Beautiful. Okay, so that will you, is that what you're going to show us on this one then, the lacy bit at the top? Yes. Oh, brilliant. It's, um, it's really, really, I'd call that pistachio. It's oh, really, pistachio, <laughs> I don't eat nuts, sorry. <laughs> it's really, really lovely to knit with. It oh, is it? It just feels so nice on your hands because it's so soft. Right. Yes. So really nice to knit with. So with this one, um, oh, and I looked up the sizing because on Wednesday I didn't know what the chest sizes were for little babies. Oh, we're not, we so I had, to. I had, a, I well, I looked up. I like to know these things. Yeah, you know? yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So um, sixteen inch chest is age zero to three months. Right. Twenty. By the time you get up to twenty two inches, you're one to two year old. Right. So this is a uh, this is a baby pattern. Yes. Yeah. Uh, my mum had a knitting machine back in the 1970s and she knitted me a purple Fair Isle jumper in the most unforgiving acrylic yarn. It was much scratchier in those days. The neckline was so tight I couldn't get it off my head. We went to holiday to Dartmoor and my mum thought I loved it because I wore it every day. Truth was, I couldn't get it off and went to bed every <laughs> night with it round my neck like a scar. <laughs> That's a brilliant story, <laughs> That's Jojo. That's fantastic. Oh. <laughs> Right, so. Oh, oh. <laughs> okay, um, so again, I've cast on for a front. Yeah. Because it's the cardigan. And this has got this lovely little, um, I don't know what you call it, because it's um, bottom edge again. I don't know what its name oh, is. hang on, but so it yours looks different to mine. Well, because oh, no, you, do, you, you knit this and then you knit, you, you do your normal stocking stitch, then you do 
a row of knitting, but then when you come to put it together, it oh, goes, it goes like that, you see. Oh, it makes this lovely we'll neat see, edge, yes. and I, I rather like it. Rather than having, because you don't always want a clingy rib. No. And some children don't like them either. They're the bits that they find uncomfortable, Itchy, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. So that goes up like that. And then I've knitted, it's using stocking stitch, so it's knit a row, purl a row. I've knitted up to the point where we're going to start the yoke right. around this part. And this is where the pattern goes. And we've got a little bit of just having to concentrate because we've got um, various combinations of knits and pearls to follow. So it tells us that we're doing our first row. It's WS, so we know that's the wrong side. And we're going to do knit one, pearl one. So it says wrong side. You have the wrong side facing, facing you. you. That's the side you're working on, yes. So knit one and then pearl one. And then knit one. Okay. Then we've got a little star. And when you get things with little stars, it always means that you're going to repeat the thing between the stars as many times as it takes to get to the end. So we've got star, pearl three, knit one, pearl one, knit one. And we repeat from the star to the end. So we make sure we do the same thing over and over all the way along. People often get confused. Just to the end of the row? Just to the end of the row. Okay. Not to the end of the whole jumper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's what you were thinking, wasn't yeah, it, there yes, for a it moment? Yes. So what does it say? It says... So it tells us we're going to purl three. Yeah. Knit one. Yeah. Knit one. Purl one. And knit one. And then it says, repeat from the star to the end. So I know I'm going to do that again. Pearl three, knit one, pearl one, knit one. Okay. And I'm going to keep, keep going. If your pattern doesn't work out, it's probably because you've counted wrongly or you've not got the right number of stitches on your needle to start oh off no. with so you or something like again, that. Um, well, if you, if you got to the end and it hadn't quite worked, I would probably take it back because else you might find then the next rows of your patterns weren't working as, right. as well. So, but it's one of those things, you've just been decreasing. So you would finish your decreasing and you'd check, you'd count your stitches to make sure you got the right amount before you yeah. carried on. I've now lost count. Sorry. So let me just have a quick look where I am. Um, hit one, pearl one, hit one, pearl three. This is the trouble when you've got a lot of counting, isn't it? Yeah. Hit one, pearl and one, And me wittering on next year. <laughs> Pearl three, knit one, pearl one, knit one. So I'm back to pearl three. This just shows, though, how ladies can, and gentlemen, but they can multitask. Because if I had the telly on, there's no way I'd remember to be going, knit one, knit pearl three, knit two. Sorry, I'm saying what you're, the opposite of what you're doing now. But I wouldn't remember if the telly was on or anything like that. I'd have to have absolute silence, <laughs> which isn't really the point of knitting, is it? Not really, no. Because I had those ladies around the guillotines back in the French Revolution do their knitting and watch all that going on. She's not listening. <laughs> I am listening. <laughs> I was just thinking no. as I was listening to you that luckily it had worked out and I'd got the right number of stitches. <laughs> <laughs> Hannah thinks I'm talking about that the ladies at the bottom of the guillotine made the Bayer tapestry. <laughs> <laughs> no, not quite. <laughs> The Bayer Tapestry was 1066. And that's actually woven, isn't it? Yes, it's, yes. It's a very big, the Bayer Tapestry isn't, or oh, it isn't a tapestry. No, it's not a tapestry. It's, it's an, an embroidery. embroidery. It's a yeah. massive embroidery. Yes. I only know this because I've just done embroidery for my next page on the Simply Sewing magazine and I did all about the Bayer Tapestry. Anyway. Interesting. Okay, so then we go along our second row and we're going to do it the opposite way. Wait, pearl one, knit one. Pearl one. Again, we've got a little star to follow, which is telling us we're going to knit three, pearl one, knit one, pearl one. Repeat from the star to the end. So this row suddenly becomes a bit easier because you can see what you did on the row before. Yeah. When you knit, you can see what the stitch before, whether it was a knit or whether it was a pearl. I don't know if the camera can see that, but you can see that the pearl stitches look different. They're coming in now, yeah. Yeah. They look different to the knit stitches on the right side. Oh, so you see. can see. Yeah. So you will be able to tell at this point if you have got it so wrong. So if you suddenly see that your pearl is one beyond where it was in the last one, you know you've gone wrong. Exactly. 
And suddenly, because you can see what you did before, you don't need to count quite so much. No. Because and when I've never heard of that when you're knitting, have the wrong side towards you. Would you normally have the right but side? But that always happens. Oh, is it? Is yes. it? So, so that's the so, norm. That's not so you always different. do. No, you always do one row on the right side. And then when you get to the end, you turn it round and come back across. Oh, so your wrong side will be your right side in the next one then. <laughs> yeah, but it's called the wrong side. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, no, because if you're knitting like this, right, you've got the wrong side towards you, then you turn the whole thing round, then the right side's towards you, not the wrong side. So the right side's towards me at the moment. Yeah. Yeah, you can see I'm nearly at the end of my row, yeah. so I will show you. What's the matter? that when I turn that round to come back across, yeah. the wrong side is facing me. Yes, yes, yes. yes. And they're saying, I'm, I shouldn't be picking on you. You're at the end of your tether with me, not the end of your row. <laughs> I'm only asking because I don't know, Hannah, just because you know the ins and outs of knitting, Hannah, and the Bayer Tapestry, exactly. Oh, we've got a photo. Oh, is it ready now? Is it ready, Dan? Here we go. I am enjoying. Thank you. Thank you, Hannah. I am enjoying watching Yarn Lane whilst knitting the lattice lace throw from the West Yorkshire Spinners. The wool is fabulous and the pattern is very easy to follow. Highly recommended from Sarah. Oh, Thank that's you, Sarah. Beautiful. Ha isn't Hannah it? thinks we're be I'm being annoying. That's all. Yes, she did. That's what you said. She's at the end of her tether with you. That's what you said. No, I've got, she a, I I've think got I, a very long tether. And I, I also think you'd let me know if I was the end. I don't think you're kind of, um, what's it, what's it, violet, shrinking violet. I think you'd say, shut up, John Scott, you're getting on my nerves. Which I like. No, no, I prefer people to be up in front like that. Here we go. Helen says, it's the same as fabric, John. There's a right side and a wrong side in knitting too. Yes, but when you put the jumper on, if you've had the wrong side towards you, and you've done the same stitches, <laughs> then you're going to have the back of the stitch on that row and then the front of the stitch but on you the don't, next But you row. don't all, well, it depends what your pattern is, but because I'm usually, if you're doing a, a pattern like this, which yeah. is stocking stitch, you knit on the right side and you purl on the wrong side. Oh, and that's what makes it come out looking like, like that. that. Yes. But so okay, if, if I knitted every knitting, row, it would look different. It's yes, garter yes. stitch and it would look different. Fine. So if you just did knit one, knit one, knit one, knit one, knit one, wrong yes. side towards you, turned it round, knit one, knit one, knit one, knit one, right side towards you, it's going to look different. Yes. Yeah. Because yes. you'll see the back of the stitches yes. on one row and the front of the stitches. That's yes. all so I'm there, getting to. So just there, John, where I did that, that was a knit oh, row. Oh, let's get into that. Let's get, hang on, let's have a look. That was a knit row on the wrong side. Right. And you can see that that looks different, can't yes. you? So you could, yes, got it now. Right, okay. Thank you. You're right, Anna. That was a funny noise. <laughs> <laughs> Anna's got stuck to the camera as she walked round. Oh, oh no. it's, it's all going on, isn't it? Isn't it? Right, carry Okay, on, carry now on, we've on. established the right and the wrong side. Are yep. we okay with that now? Yes, thank yes, you. Yes, okay. Um, well, every day's a school day. I know. Thank you. I know it is. I quite agree. So, um, the third row I did just the same as my first row while we were establishing what side size side we're on yeah. our fourth row we're going to do some of our nice little yarn over things to make holes again right brilliant right so Stuart says wrong side oh is as in the side that no one will see but yes when you're knitting in a way the wrong side will become the right side until you turn <laughs> it back again to the right side it's good to ask questions thank you Stuart it he's is. working in the shop and Helen says they're sp oh they're supposed to be in crochet too but I can't tell do you do back and wrong uh, there is there is a wrong side you you will tell if you're doing lots of doubles you can tell which is the wrong side and the right side well you, you can on all the stitches actually but often on crochet you might work on the wrong side for a while yeah. or you might work on just the right side Crochet is a little bit different. Right. So I've done a purl one, knit one, purl one. I'm going to put the, my yarn around the needle. Yeah. And then I'm going to purl three together. Oh, what's this? Oh. So this is making our little lacy holes again. Right. Okay. And then I'm going to put my yarn around the needle. Purl one, knit one, and purl one. And then we've got a little star again. We're going to repeat from the star to the end. So yarn around the needle. And 
pearl three together. It's quite hard to get three on at one time. This this does slide beautifully, this um, yarn. Mm -hmm. Judith says, can't wait till you have a go at knitting, John. I think we'll be <laughs> waiting, waiting a while, Judith. I'm not first in the queue to, um, to teach you. <laughs> okay. Oh, thanks. <laughs> now the truth comes out. <laughs> Carol says, with fold-up hems, is that what you're doing? Yeah. yeah. That's what it's called, a fold-up hem. Fold I hem. pick up stitches from the start row, then knit together, as sometimes I find I sew it too tightly. Oh, that's a good oh. idea. Uh, now, don't all be agreeing. Carol, don't agree with Judith. They're all agreeing now that I've got to do something. Not today. I need to practice. I showed you, no. how, to, showed you how to cast on on Wednesday. Oh, you did, but I think we might have to do as a pre-record in case I let a rude word slip <laughs> out or something. Because that's more than You might that. have to have a practice at home yeah. first. No, no, no good at home because I've, I've nobody to show me how to do it properly. I'll end up with some string vest or something. And then we go. Oh, that's, I can see it. Yeah, I can so see it you now. can see it, see it starting to come. And then we go back to our first row again. It's so clever, isn't it? Something so simple. Well, it is. You are, I mean, because you are literally only doing two stitches. Yeah. It's just the order you do them in. It is very clever. Yeah. And so you can see there, that's where my yarn was round the needle. So uh -huh. it looks a bit funny. But then you just purl it normally. And then that will make the stitch and off we go again for a bit more it's a nice pattern this one actually yeah because when you can knit quite well it can be boring to always do just straightforward knitting it's it's quite nice sometimes to have a pattern because it keeps you a little bit interested Alert. yeah, yeah exactly, absolutely yeah. yes because i can't imagine if you were just doing a knit a row pearl a row knit a row for a whole jumper and you think that's you're just doing a child's one but if you did an adult's one you literally get to go backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards, backwards yeah. and forwards. And it's only when you have to start going in for an armhole or a raglan sleeve or something, it must get a little, when you yeah. have to get fewer stitches on your needle. And that sort of knitting's great if you're just sitting and doing it in front of the telly and stuff and you don't want to have to think about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. But sometimes it's nice to do the things where you've got a little bit of something else going on. Exactly, exactly. Right, so when okay. I get to the end of this one, yeah, this right, row, okay. and then I'll show you the pattern, then you can get on to, we've got one more to do, haven't we? Yeah, we have. You'll be able to see that pattern quite nicely now. Oh, wow. Does it make the piece wider? Or will it no, it's be just how I've just folded, I've done that out there. Oh, no, just no, no, so no, you no, can because see. It, yeah. I've, these edges have curled in a little yeah. as well. So, yeah. Oh, this go. this yarn, again, is nice because you can see the definition of your stitches really yes, nicely, yeah, can't yeah. you? Definitely. Okay, let's move on to the last lot we've got now, which is this one which I'll hold it up for you. It's rather cute. This one has been made by Carol Walter. Carol Walter has made this one. Red, white and blue. Now the pattern in this one here, let me just fold that one up for you. The pattern in this one here, you get four balls of yarn. You get two, they're double knit. They are 100% um, acrylic. You get two blue, one red and one white. And... This makes from a size, oh, now. Oh, okay, because we've, made, yeah, that's fine, that's fine. This makes from a size 16 chest to a 22 inch chest. And four balls will make you all the size. Uh, yeah, four balls will make you all the sizes. If you do the small sizes, you'll end up with one ball left over. But this is enough to make all the sizes, one, one of the sizes. And that's your pattern there. I wonder how they get children to look sad like that in, ad, in photo shoots. Because you can't say, you know, think sad, can you, to a little child. Oh, there it is. Oh, I didn't even notice the little um, different colour around the bottom. So that's one colourway, the red, white and blue. And then we also, this is a different size we've made here. We also have it in the green and white. Now, obviously, this is going to be a smaller version because you've only got three balls in this one. So in this one, you can only make up to the size 20 inch chest. You can't do the 22 inch chest with this one because there's not enough yarn. Hmm? Got the pattern. 
Oh yeah, yeah, but you haven't got to, you've got so you can make a bigger size from the pattern, but you can't make it with this yarn. There's not enough yarn to make the, the one the biggest size. You can do 16, 18, or 20 in this, but not you couldn't make the larger size in that one. Anyway, so that's that. That's uh eight oh eight ninety nine, that's a good little um deal, isn't it? And then that's oh hang on, who made this one? Teresa Constantine made this one. That's a really cute little one, isn't it? Okay, so now what are you going to show us on this one then? Um, well, again, it's not a particularly difficult make, and I was just going to do the bottom part. It's That's like right, you've only got a couple of minutes. Yeah, it was um, just changing colour, and it's nice, this one, because it's got a slightly different bottom to it again. You've got a stocking stitch bottom. You can see it kind of curls up a little yeah, bit, yeah, doesn't yeah, yeah. it? And then we've got the rib. So I've cast on, I've cast on for the sleeve, and um, knitted four rows of stocking stitch. And then to change colour, people get worried about changing yeah, colour yeah. when I'll they're learning to knit. You, you literally break off your yarn. Oh. Just break it off and start with the next one. Oh. That's all you have to do. It's so that you don't easy. knot it or tie No, it because in what you're going to do at the end is you will get one of those nice big blunt needles. Bodkins. Yeah. You call it a bodkin? Yeah, or a darning needle. Darning. Yeah. yeah. Um, and just weave your ends in oh, with okay. that. So it doesn't come unraveled then? when you've knitted a, a fair bit if you feel like it's going to sort of be a little bit loose there and you're a bit you know worried it's going to pull through I might just do a single knot just to hold it in place and stop yes, it getting yeah, baggy yeah. but I wouldn't start tying lots of you know granny knots no. or anything and like how, that. How long a tail do you leave then is that, that so you than... want to about what I've left there would be fine just to thread onto a needle and weave through weave what's that through. about 10 centimeters or so okay um, Laurie says, I taught myself how to knit, did a complicated pattern for a beginner, a lacy jumper. I got bored with the plain stitches. It turned out okay, everybody loved it. Or were they just being polite, Laurie? <laughs> now, I've got to ask a question. So when you do these four rows, one, two, three, four, five rows of the white stitching across the bottom of the waist there. Yes, yeah, so that's the rib. They're different to the white stitches in yes, the sleeve. Yes, because on the rib here, I'm doing knit, knit one per one. Right. So you, let's just show you from the start. So my yarn starts at the back and I knit a stitch. And then you bring your yarn around to the front so that you can purl a stitch. Oh, and okay. that's what makes it. Oh, so look that's like a, a rib. rib. So it's a rib above the starter. Uh, yes. Above the starter. But that's just your, your, your yeah, plain Yes, so those knitting. four first rows yeah. are just plain stocking stitch, yeah. knit a row and purl a row. Yeah. And then on our white, we're doing knit one stitch, purl one stitch. Okay, and then you'll so go back when you go back to the green to doing stocking stitch again. That's correct, yes. And the sleeves and are the sleeves, stitch. Um, I believe, yeah, they've got a little bit of rib down at the cuff, and then your stocking stitch. Oh yes. Yeah, yeah. but you change colour in exactly the same way again. Okay, so I've got a quick question. If you're doing a raglan sleeve, do you knit the front and you knit the back, keep them separate, and then knit the sleeves and then sew them on, or do you knit it all in one? Well, this particular pattern, it does it separately, right? And then you stitch them together. Right. However, I have seen. Um, I've been following lots of people on Instagram lately, stitching raglans where they actually start from the neck and work all the way down. Oh, okay. And I haven't managed to work out how they do that. Oh, yet. Okay. I haven't so tried this, it myself. So I've only one, ever done it this way. Which this is, one really will be um, so you would a back make and a front. A front and a back and you'll make two sleeves. And you'll stitch them together and then you'll pick up that Yeah, I was going to say, line. so the stitch at the top will be on one of these kilt pins to hold the at the top of the at the top of the neck there yes before on you start stitch, knitting on a stitch holder yes yeah <laughs> except holder. there'll be a little bit here of where you put in your button band as well oh yes, um, yes, yes. but i did on a, a program a few couple of weeks ago i showed how to pick up for the button band oh okay so if you're not sure that will be it will be in the files yes exactly <laughs> uh, you just need to go to youtube yarn lane it's easier to look for that one uh, christine's got a question apparently it's coming across the bottom hi john how do you pick up the stitches around the neckline from christina okay so do you know what i'm going to do have you got time to do that or should we save that for another show well think? i was just wondering if i could show you on the bottom here oh, okay um of how you pick up i'll tell you what i'll do it got on the four bottom minutes, of this just so you know. <laughs> so when it tells you to pick up stitches you have to do it evenly along. So you can imagine you've fin imagine that's a piece that you've just finished and you've got to start picking them up. It's quite strong that yarn. It's really strong. <laughs> 
Stuart says he knits from top down raglan. He says it's the best way to knit. It just increases each side. It's so much more Is fun. Is this your friend, friend Stuart? Yeah. He needs One's to send me a pattern. Shot. I want to have a go at it. Um, so you literally pushing your needle through that bottom edge and knitting a stitch. And you can choose where you're going and you're going to pick up like that. I mean, this, because it's along the bottom, I can see every stitch to go into to pick them up. If you're coming up a side, you might have to um, sort of space them out carefully so they're nice and even. But that's how you do it. Mm. And you start to then get your stitches and then you can knit them and you're, uh, it will tell you, your pattern will tell you how many stitches to pick up. So it may not be the same number as you cast off, but you just need to make sure that you pick them up nice and evenly work out the spacing. If you get to the end and you haven't got the right number in or you realise you've got a bit of a gap, it's very easy at this point just to pull them out and have another go before you start knitting lots of rates. Of course. Yeah. Brilliant. So right. Thank you, Catherine. That was brilliant. Always a pleasure. So now, when you, you know when you're back on, you I'm know when you're back, back on Sewing on, Street. I'm definitely back on Yarn Lane on the 26th of March, but right. I don't know if I'll be in before. Before that, okay, brilliant. Thank you ever so much for today. Right, where do I start? Okay, let's go backwards. So we'll do this one first. This one, you get three balls of yarn, 100% acrylic, and the pattern. And there, it's, that's make this little jumper here, and that will make up to a 16 to 20 inch chest. Okay, and now I need to just make a bit of space on my, I'll just put them in the box here. There you go. Righty ho, then the red, white and blue one, which is this one here. Same pattern, same pattern, but this one you've got four balls of yarn. So you can do all the sizes in this one. Third of the stock of that one's gone. I'm not surprised it's cute, isn't it? The red, white and blue. Shall I just show you? There you go. I love that white stripe at the bottom there. Okay, that's that one, that one, that one, that one, that one. And the pattern. Okay, right. So where do you want to go next? So, so the next one was this lime green, uh, not lime, pistachio. This is the one that's an acrylic yarn, um, but it's been made to feel... Oh, it's hand washed, this one. Oh, no, you can machine wash it as well. It was just a um, machine or hand wash, yeah. Uh, cool tumble, do not iron. I was going to ask you a question about Tension, 22 stitches to a 10 centimetre for 31. Oh, OK. Needle size four. Right, OK. So this is three balls of the green, one of the white. And this is the one where you can make a 16 to 22 inch chest. That one. Lovely. Oh, OK. <laughs> this is getting a bit confusing down here. Right. OK, that's fine. Now, the pale, uh, oh, no, the bright, the blue and white one. Oh, oh, yes, yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, the little blue one, little blue one, little blue one. Yes, it's just when you go blue and white, I've got a lot of blue and white on the table. There you go. There we go. So this one, the pattern's on the floor, in the box. <laughs> but you do get the pattern. I wouldn't want to. I've got it, got it. In fact, yeah, no, I've had to drop this one on the floor. Right, so you get the pattern, you get three balls of the variegated, one of the white, no buttons, you have to display your own buttons and needles. Um, 16 to 22 inch chest, that one. Okay, that's that one there. Now I'm going to do the... Yeah, so I've got the mummy and me, I'll do the mummy first. Down to single figures on this one. So you get six balls, of, one, two, three, six balls of yarn on this one. And the instructions. And that will make this. Gorgeous, isn't it? Right, okay. And that, this, now this one, the actual pattern goes from a 22 chest to a 42 chest. So this is to make the, uh, to do the six balls of wool here. The other one's got three, isn't it? Yeah, so this one would be to make the 28 inch right there up to the 42 inches, this bundle. That's that one, gorgeous. Then I've got that in the smaller size with the three balls of the double knit plus the pattern. Oh, single figures this one now as well. Single figures this one as well. 
So that's cute. I'll just put that in the picture there for you. So that's the smaller size, the child size one of that. Now I also have that child size one in like the very, very soft shell. I'm not quite sure what color it is. It's called what? It's called sweet pea. Oh, okay. Sweet pea. So this one you get three balls of the double knit yarn, 100% acrylic, plus your pattern to make this. Very popular, that one. In fact, that, that range is the most popular of the whole show, that one. Then we've got the stripy one that I started with, which is for dad or, well, I say dad and son. It doesn't have to be dad and son. Larger size. Oh, Hannah's making one for herself. Right, so this is the blue and white one. Got to hurry up a little bit, this one. That's the blue and white one. Two balls of blue, two balls of white. Obviously, there's not enough in there to do the adult one. It's enough to do up to the 30-inch chest, this one. And there's only 14 of those left at 5 to 1 uh, this afternoon. Then I've got the pink and grey one, which is this one. Okay, that's fine. You've got the two balls of pink, two balls of grey, and the pattern. Again, that's only enough to do up to the size 30. If you want to do the adult one, you'd need to get more yarn. Oh, now check out the pink and grey one, because that's very popular as well. Oh, it's gone into a major competition with the blue and white one. Anyway, we've got to go, got to go, got to go. We will see you tomorrow at Yarn Lane at 12 o'clock, but we'll also see, what are we doing tomorrow? Twink knits, twink knits tomorrow. And then, but I am back doing Sewing Street at eight o'clock tomorrow morning. So until then, we will see you. Take care, have a lovely day. See you at eight o'clock tomorrow morning.